Hi, everybody. Bill Noble here from Token Metrics with our Women's History Month series, where we're featuring the top women in crypto. And today we have somebody who is arguably the number one woman in crypto, Crypto Wendy O. Wendy, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to chat a little bit. All right. Yeah, we're happy to have you. So let, let's start. Let's start with the not the usual question. Was there a moment or moments where you said to yourself, oh my God, I'm making it in crypto? Like, was it your portfolio? Was it your social media? Do you, mm. do you recall the aha moments where you're like, hey, I, I've made it here? Actually, no, because I still have a lot of work to do. A lot, a lot of work to okay. do. So I'm still growing. I'm still building. I'm still, you know, continuing to educate myself. But there's still a lot of work for um, content creators like myself in the space to do. All right. Tell us how you got started. Tell us what led you to go, you know what? I want to move from, you know, what I'm doing in the normie world over to content creation in crypto. Tell us about that. So in 2017, I was quitting my job anyways, because I had worked in healthcare. I was over it. It was a very toxic situation. And I wanted to be close to my daughter. Plus, I was severely underpaid. Um, so I was going to finish school anyways. But end of 2017, when I was in the process of um, quitting my job to, to merge over to, to school, um, I found Bitcoin again. The first time I heard about Bitcoin was end of or was in like 2011, 2012. But I didn't think I was smart enough or intelligent enough to kind of enter then because you know, I wasn't brought up in a tech household. I was brought up in a single mom household. So I, you know, I started hearing about it on Libertarian Radio and then I heard about it again in 20, end of 2017. I was like, I'm going to try this. And the content creation started because I was doing free meetups. I was doing them in San Pedro, California at a crypto OTC desk, crypto space. And I was doing technical analysis meetups, like meetups at, at bars or breweries, just to kind of like connect, get people together. So I've hosted over four dozen of those free events and my audience wow. is global. They wanted to see those events. So I was like, I have to live stream these. So then I did. And that's how the channel started. And then as I got more and more confident, I started creating content. Like I started posting my trades, Bitcoin updates. And then I started getting opportunities to do like disclose sponsor reviews or, you know, interviews, just different stuff like that. I was like, this is cool. I could totally monetize this. And then I just kept making content. All right. Do you, do you, uh, do you see, or do you connect with, you know, like female fans or hear about women that, that you've inspired? And of course, there's the question, you know, who, who inspires you in crypto? So I get a lot of really amazing men and women that message me and that thank me for what I do. And I appreciate it. It feels really good to actually be appreciated because when you're on Twitter, you're on different like social media apps, you get a lot of hate. Like some of my YouTube comments are absolutely disgusting. So I appreciate that type of stuff. And I read all of those. Um, as far as who inspires me in crypto, I don't have like any crypto heroes. Um, the person that inspires me in the world the most is my great aunt um, because she worked in traditional finance before women were like before it was acceptable for women to work, like to actually have jobs. They're just supposed to, you know, stay at home, have babies, clean the house, be homemakers. But this was like after the Great Depression. And, you know, I think it was made probably about um, 10 years after the Great Depression it had ended. And then she, you know, she started off in a sweatshop and then she started sweeping floors in a bank, became a teller and then started training top um, executives, presidents of like chemical bank and whatever back in Brooklyn, New York. So that's the person that inspires me. I look to people that actually have a track record to be inspired by. I'm not just going to make, oh, look at this crypto founder. Or, oh, look at this person. I'm going to be inspired by them. I want somebody that I can relate to, somebody that's a real person and somebody that, you know, has helped kind of, you know, help me grow along the way. So what do you think helped drive your success on Twitter? Like, you know, was it affability, likability? Was it the trading calls? You know, I, I know you've got a background in TA. I do the same thing. I mean, you know, can you, can you tell us how you did it on, on Twitter? So I just started posting my content. I was always myself. I didn't pretend to be somebody that wasn't myself. I've, you know, I've evolved over time and regressed over time, but like the charts are what kind of got people excited, plus the events that I was doing. But it was just really me being myself and not being some like rah-rah cheerleader for Bitcoin. Because you see a lot of that. You'll see a lot of people that are just like 
creating these posts that don't care about it. They don't understand the ethos. They come from a place of privilege. And to me, it's kind of like disrespectful, but at the same time, that's their brand. That's their business. That's how they're getting their bread. That's whatever. But I just try to be very authentic because I actually do care about people and I care about people improving their quality of life. And for me to get on a platform and not be myself, I think that that's kind of ridiculous. So it just, it doesn't fit with my personality type to do that. Uh, that's a, uh... That's excellent information. That's good to know. So as a technical analyst, I sort of share in that, uh, I share in that sentiment. Uh, my daughter goes to college. Uh, she thinks it's cool when I started to improve my Twitter and YouTube. I mean, does your daughter know you're in crypto? Oh, does yeah. she know that you're cool? I mean, she like, I, <sighs> I don't care if she thinks that I'm cool. Like I'm her mom. Like I have to be her mom first. She knows that mommy's on TV. She knows that mommy has been on like the news that, you know, been in newspapers, magazines, stuff like that. She knows that mommy has the YouTube. She knows mommy is on crypto Twitter, but she's, you know, she's five years old. So she kind of grew up okay. while with me on this journey. Um, but she's just kind of, she's a kid. She knows what crypto is. She has Bitcoin. She knows that she's not supposed to tell people her real name. She doesn't tell people she holds Bitcoin and we keep her face private because there's creeps online, but she's just kind of there vibing and like enjoying the ride. All right. How did you deal with any low points in crypto? Like, you know, I was in the bear market in 2018 as a content provider with Charlie Shrem, you know, can, can you tell us about any low points in crypto or even if it's not a low point, just so you, how you've ridden out the tougher times. So crypto is fun, but it also sucks. There's a very dark side of crypto. Very, very dark side. There's a side of a particular community that is not excited about women and being crypto. And for me, that's kind of terrible because well, the way I grew up, like everybody just kind of vibes. And if you don't like somebody, you just kind of ignore them. Um, so that was probably the most challenging part is me being authentic and me being myself and people just trashing me for like baseless reasons. And that, I mean, that's hard when you wake up you go on, you know, your social media, which is your job. You see people commenting about your looks, um, about your intelligence, about um, different things about you, sending you rape threats, death threats, um, those same things to my child. So that type of stuff is hard. And then when you get a bunch of people that just pile on and they have no factual, they have no facts about their opinion at all. It's just, we don't like you for whatever reason. That's a low point and it doesn't feel good. But at the same time, I'm a little bit petty. And part of my personality is, is you don't like me or if my existence is bothering you, I'm going to continue to have a presence just to be petty. And that might not be very mature, responsible, but, well, responsible, that's fine, but it might not be super mature. But at the same time, like how else am I supposed to deal with this grief and how else am I supposed to deal with random people disliking me, threatening physical violence against me and my child? Like, you know, like I'm not just going to go away. I'm not going to cower. I'm not going to hide. I'm going to come and I'm going to continue to be myself and be the best version of myself. Strong. So I, I actually, found you and really started to follow you intently after I saw you on around the blockchain with BitBoy. So you were like a regular on that, or at least that's when I picked up on it. You know, what's it like to work with a guy who's frankly, who's that big, right? Is, is there, well, is there anything about that experience that stood out? BitBoy is a friend of mine. Like he and I, we okay. both kind of came up together. He's one of the largest male YouTube content creators in the world. I'm one of the largest female crypto content creators in the world. So we both do things differently. Um, I don't look at him like anything other than my friend and like he and I, we go back and forth and we banter and we butt heads a little bit. So, and, and that keeps it fun. And I still go on around the blockchain, but um, a lot of these people are just my friends and colleagues. I don't get starstruck by anybody and that could be because I lived in Hollywood, but I don't look, I look at everybody as they're created equal because I don't want to give somebody more, like, I guess, like clout than somebody else, because honestly, just because somebody has a more well-known name than somebody that might not, the some person that might not have a super well-known name might be a better person or might have be more genuine. And I like to treat everybody the same and judge people based on the experiences that I have as with them as individuals. I was on Girl Gone Crypto show right before she announced that she was leaving her job to go full-time in crypto. Nice. I mean, have you got any advice for somebody who does what you did and what she did, which is like, you know, leave a job, like it or not like it, to go full time in crypto, right? Like just the emotional volatility, financial. I mean, is there anything that comes to mind that somebody who sees this now or for our women, 
you know, in crypto series might see this two years from now. Is there anything that comes to mind that you would tell a woman who's seriously considering doing, you know, crypto full time real deal? So this is the thing. It doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman. If you're passionate about something, take the plunge and go for it. The only thing that I recommend, like I didn't leave my job for crypto. I didn't leave my job working in HIV AIDS to work in crypto. I left my job because I needed to finish school. So I had money saved up to kind of pay for bills and expenses. Um, but if if you, like, I think that it's important for people to chase their dreams and to be happy. But if you're somebody who wants to go full-time crypto or go full-time something else or change careers, make sure you have a savings. Make sure you have some, like some cash or whatever it is stacked so that you can pay your bills because we never know what's going to happen next. So to me, that was important to that. Like, I didn't say I'm going to leave my job and I'm going to do crypto full time. I had no idea. Like, didn't know. It just kind of happened. And I get, I don't want to say that I got lucky. I worked my ass off to be where I am today. And I put up with a lot of stuff. I did a lot of networking. I spent a lot of time away from home. I traveled to these events. I, you know, it's away from my child. So it, it really just kind of depends. But at the same time, crypto was an amazing opportunity and I did make the right choice. All right. What do you think the next big theme in crypto is? That could be anything that you're working on, anything that is consensus or out of consensus that you're thinking or telling people about crypto these days and where it might go next. Honestly, the thing I'm most excited about, I mean, regulations are coming, so that is something that we do have to deal with. But I'm also very excited about the metaverse, about NFTs. The actual, I'm not talking about the 10,000 generative NFT pieces. Like, I'm not talking about that stuff. I'm talking about actual creators, artists, musicians, people who have been in those industries for decades and decades, finally being able to own their artwork, their songs, their merchandising rights, their licensing rights, getting royalties, having complete complete control, being self-sovereign over their content, similarly how we are to Bitcoin. And yeah, I trade some of these NFT projects. I trade all coins. I trade all kinds of stuff to make money. But at the same time, I feel like this is a necessary, kind of somewhat a necessary evil to get the true purpose of what NFT technology can do for creators or for, you know, birth certificates, passports, like whatever, you know, healthcare records, different things like that. But I feel like NFTs are really going to revolutionize that. Plus the play to earn aspect when it comes to metaverse NFT projects. We have people in countries that were maybe making like I don't even know what the what a salary is in, in a country that's not doing well economically but you have people that are able to make like a hundred dollars a day playing something like um town star from gala games and that literally could have been like their whole entire year salary and to me that's absolutely amazing to where people could literally be at home with their families and make a decent wage to support their households. And again, this, it kind of depends where you are and there's caveats to this, but I feel like this industry is going to continue to expand and going to continue to improve the quality of life for a lot, a lot of people. And I absolutely love to see the underdog win. Yes. I, I bought the underdog, uh, a, a, a 60 year old artist that helped me create some of the art on my Twitter, uh, for women's history month. I got her some Oculus goggles to, uh, nice. you know, to take some of her creativity into the metaverse. So I'm no doubt that when she sees this interview, she'll be really stoked to hear that, you know, you really do think metaverse gaming play to earn. We have a guy who's doing like workout to earn, but it's a sneaker nice. NFT and the guy's making like $200 a day to work out. So, uh, it's See? really interesting that you think that that's next. Cause a lot of people think that that's a speculative fad. It's not a speculative fact because you literally, I mean, well, you could, I'm not, I don't like to talk in absolute. So if you want to think it's a speculative fact, that's fine. But you have to think about it. There's so many people, especially in the United States that are working jobs that do not pay well. Um, a lot of these like CVS, Walgreens, um, any major um, pharmaceutical company, healthcare, like if you're a pharmacy tech or a CNA or like a medical assistant, like a lot of these low level positions, they pay you crap salaries. They pay you crap salaries. You have to do a majority of the work. You have boots on the ground dealing with the patients. They pay you crap salaries. And if you will even become a doctor or a pharmacist, your salaries get capped. And it's like, who wants to live to, to get up, bust their behind every day, get treated like absolute garbage by your employer, by your clients, 
and just have a really terrible quality of life. So people are going to start looking for other avenues to make extra money. And there's a big discrepancy in crypto. There's a lot of people with capital, with wealth that come from, from the upper middle class and come from wealth, as opposed to people that grew up in poverty like myself. I was grew up poor, lower middle class, without a father, four of us in one bedroom. And it's like, I had to learn different ways to hustle to be able to pay for things. I remember I was 13 years old. I worked in a pet store, cleaning up like, you know, animal droppings, um, getting crickets, like cleaning the shop up, making $20 a day for like 10 hours worth of work so I can like have a cell phone and have walking around money. And a lot of people didn't come from that. So for me to be able to to then, then I was able to start selling stuff on eBay. But now, in, but now in you know 2022, there's so many different opportunities. I can trade crypto. I can trade NFTs. I can make NFTs. I can play play um, play to earn projects. Like so many different ways that people can make money today than they could like 10 or 20 years ago. And more and more people are going to start doing this. Like who does it not want to work for themselves, especially as a parent? I get to wake up and make my own schedule. Like obviously I do have to work up by a certain wake up by a certain time to get my kid to school and get my content out. But realistically, God forbid there's an emergency with my daughter, I can leave. Like if I got the phone call right now, like, you know, low, low fell down, she got hurt, I would say, Hey, Bill, I gotta go, I gotta go, gotta go get my kid. You can't do that at another job. Like when I worked in healthcare, we would get written up if we left early, regardless if it was a personal family matter. Okay. Well, there's there's none of that in crypto because it's a decentralized world. Let me ask you something. What's your work day like? I mean, do you have do you have a 12 hour work day or is it like a, a Zen six hour work day with a little trading and content? In other words, is it is it working hard or is it working smart with the Zen and the trading? Can you tell us anything about your day to day? I'm up at 530 every morning. Um I try to get a workout in. I have to take my kid to school. She is a nightmare in the morning. She does not like to wake up, but that's expected. So we we work and we do different fun things to kind of get her up. And then I take her to school. I come home, start making content. And, you know, I get on calls. I do my consulting with clients. Sometimes I take a trade. I've been trading a lot less now. It's more like becoming a swing trader because it's just so much easier to do. And I'm literally working most days till 530 to like 730 every day. And as, as, as we hire more and more people, it's going to get a little bit easier, but at the same time, it's a, I do work a lot, a lot of hours. All right. So about your organization, um, you know, tell us about your crew. How big is it? What, what, what do they all do? And as are you running a consulting business? Can you give me some color on that? Yeah. So we also do consulting, um, at, you know, at the Crypto Window brand, we get about 20 to 50 requests per week um, for clients to come on and either they want sponsor content or they want like consulting. Um, and I kind of stopped doing consult. Well, I still do it for people that I, that I know, but for a lot of times I, we've turned a lot of projects down because we don't have the manpower to do it because they need a lot of work. And we, we're, we're going to start doing more and more. We're working on building that out properly. Um, but it's, there's, there's, so I have a thumbnail guy, I've got an editor, I have a email person that, and then I have a vetting team that vet, like anything, anytime I want to talk about a project on the show or mention it, I'm like, can you check this out and make sure if it's legit? Like, regardless if it's sponsored or not, we take a look at everything that we bring on to the show just to make sure we take a look at the guests that we bring on. When people like you reach out to have me on, which thank you for having me on, we make sure that you guys are legit because we don't want to do, we don't want to go anywhere or be placed anywhere. That's not like, you know, that, that doesn't make sense. And then I have, what else, what else, what else? I just hired an intern and then I also have a free newsletter and I've got two writers for that. And we're going to, I'm going to be hiring a content producer soon and also like an ad, like an admin assistant. And then um, I'm looking for like a professional PR firm to kind of help with the brand. But other than that, I probably want to say I've got like 10 people on payroll right now. All right. That's really impressive. All right, Wendy, we appreciate you joining us today for everybody out there. All right. This is an interview with somebody to look up to Thank you for real. All right. So Wendy, thanks for being here. Uh, this is your host, Bill Noble with the Token Metrics Women in Crypto series. We'll see you next time.